exercise 19. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality inside Creo 2.0 when it comes to working with equations, or as Creo calls them, relations. Um, in this scenario, we're going to make uh, like a clamshell enclosure, and there's all these ribs that need to be stacked along the side that you could see here. And if we change the size, like make it larger or smaller, we want that rib stack, which is just a, a linear pattern, to automatically update so that it fills the entire length of the uh, enclosure. And so this is kind of a neat little equation. We'll go, we'll go ahead and build this. Let's start with a new part file. Go ahead and call it E19. And hit OK. I'll turn on my planes. Start a sketch on the front plane and begin by just drawing a rectangle. Now, with the latest versions of Creo, you don't really need to use this equation that I'm about to show you, but uh, I, it's just to kind of give it a very small digestible chunk on how, how equations work inside the software. So, I'm going to use just the standard rectangle and I'm going to try and center this. I'm going to zoom up to it, click, and just drag a little rectangle out. Make sure that there's no extraneous uh, relationships like uh, equal relationships for vertical and horizontal. It should just have V's and H's and some dimensions. We're going to go ahead and change this. The overall length or the height is going to be one inch from the center. And actually I should say the overall is going to be two inches high. And then center it again, this shorter dimension here, to center it, this is going to be uh, two. And the overall length is going to be four. So this is what you should end up with, a 2 by 4 inch rectangle. And then lay the dimensions out like I have them on the screen here because it'll just make it easier to select them for this equation. Um, now with the equation we just go to Tools, Relations, and then the Relations Editor comes up. And you just start by clicking on what you want. So for this example, we always want this to be half of that. So if we ever change this dimension here, the overall width, then this will automatically update and stay exactly centered. So we're going to go ahead and select this dimension here. And we're going to go ahead and equal to. And then we're going to type uh, and click on this dimension. And then click on the divided by, type in 2. I hit enter. And do the same with this one, and this, uh, whatever yours might be named differently. These are just the dimension names that automatically come up. So I'm going to click on this one on the right, and then type in equal to this dimension here, divided by 2. Again, this is a very simple little couple of uh, equations here. And then on the right, you just want to verify it. So click on verify, and make sure it says that they're successfully verified. Hit OK. And you can hit OK again. Now that means if I ever change this 4 to 5, before I hit enter, this should update to 2.5. Sure enough, once I do, it does. Okay, and the same goes with this one. If I change this to 3, that should change to 1.5. And change it back to 2. So at its most basic form, that's a relation, as they call it, or an equation. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and extrude this. So we're going to go to um, Sketch, OK, and Extrude. And we want to extrude this approximately, let's see here, one and a half inch inches. And hit the green check mark to apply. I'm going to turn off the planes. Just so it's a little easier to look at there. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add some additional features here. So we're going to add some radiuses at 0.5 on all four corners. So we'll go rounds, 0.5, select the four corners, and hit apply. Now rotate this and make sure you're selecting this underside face. For the next sketch, so you can select this face, start a sketch, and draw a line. Now here you see you can't align yourself to the tangent edge, so we're going to have to um, 
get out of that, we're just going to go to the References button on the left here. Click on References and select that edge as a reference. And that's all. Just hit Close. Now we could go to the Line Tool and lock in there. Drag up a vertical line a little bit higher than the, the block. And then drag it to the right a little bit. Drag out an angled line. And then connect it. Okay, in this case, we need it to be 91 degrees. So there's a little bit of a taper on there. Also, let's go to the Normal Dimension tool up here and add a dimension at the bottom here. And that needs to be... Just verify that. Maybe 0.125 and 1.55 high. 0.125. And then we just have to give it the height. So let's go select this to the left. That's going to be 1.55. That should be it. Hit the green check mark. Go to the revolve tool. Select the vertical line that you drew, not the angled line. And it will go full 360 degrees. Hit apply. And now we'll go ahead and pattern that. So make sure it's selected. Go to the Pattern tool and select Direction over here on the left. Select this edge at the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the parameters here. It's going to be um, divided up 16 instances of 0.2 spacing. So 16 and 0.2. And hit Apply. So nothing particular mysterious about that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and select this top surface to sketch on, and we're going to create a couple more references on the very first one we drew. So zoom up to it, and go to References, and click on these two corners. Close. Go ahead and draw a center line between the two. Actually, use this center line here. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now go to um, the normal dimension tool, click on the two points, and then glide up here or down below. Looks like let's try that again. I'm trying to let it get them. You know what? I'm gonna have to draw a line. Just draw a line across there. So then we could dimension the line. Click down there. Just hit um, over here. It says resolve dimension because it already has two co coincident relations. Hit dim ref, which is going to turn it to a reference dimension. And that's it. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then later on, we're going to use that for our equation. OK, now at this point, we could go ahead and we're going to begin our. Relations, it's called. So we go to Tools and Relation. And manual here, oops, we're going to go ahead and add this in as shown. I'm going to minimize this a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay, so the first dimension is the number of revolves. That's going to be equal to floor. Now, floor is basically the integer. And you could, have, you could put floor or ceiling. In this case, we want to round down because we can't have like 16.5 ribs or some some uh, dimension like that. It won't recognize it. So with the floor, it's going to automatically convert it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So all you do with the uh, relations, just click on the surfaces here. Actually, let's click on the actual sketch of the tree. What it will do, it will bring up all the dimensions we need. And so we can start with the 16 revolves and make that equal to and type in floor. Okay, now we're going to put in uh, some brackets here. So shift, eight, uh, shift 9, which is the parentheses, put two of them in. Okay, and then this next dimension that we have to select is going to be four inches 
it's going to be minus the two radiuses. So let's click over here. So the four inches minus and then bracket again. So shift nine. The radius, which is over here, you have to click on actually the surface of the radius to see it. There it is. It's kind of hard. Make sure you don't click on something by accident. And it's going to be times two because they're on both sides. Close bracket, close bracket, which is basically shift zero, zero. Okay, that's, then we're going to divide that by the x, the reference that we dropped there. And there's the reference right there. Close bracket, and then plus one. Verify that. Okay, so we have the revolves is equal to the floor, parenthesis, parenthesis, the four inch dimension, which is the width, minus the radiuses times two, because there's two of them, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, divided by D3, which is the reference, in this case, of close parenthesis plus one. All right, let's verify it. And it was successful. If not, go back and change those. But you, um, I sometimes have students who type in those actual numbers. And remember, those like D1 or P1, whatever they are, those you can't type them in uh, necessarily unless you know exactly what they are. You really want to click on the dimension. OK, and OK. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and mirror that across. So I'm going to go back to the model and select the feature, which in this case is the pattern. And then we're just going to go from to the mirror tool. And our mirror plane, let's turn on our planes here, will be our like it's going to be our top, um, yeah, our top plane, and hit the green check mark. So now we have on both sides. I'm going to turn off all this extra stuff, and let's test it out. If you double click on the surface, or you can remember, you can always right click on it here and edit. Find the four inch dimension, and let's change it to five. Hit enter, and there it goes. It automatically updated the number. Of uh, ribs to fit that area. So we can change it to three. Let's see what it does. There it goes. Let's change it back to four. And that pretty much concludes this exercise.